Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Wednesday, March 24th. As always, I thank those of you that stay committed to these videos. Uh, those of you that share them. Uh, word gets out to more people. That's that's my passion, to get the word out to as many people as we possibly can. Marcy, thank you for your faithfulness. Um, I, I hope you stay in our area so you can start coming back to Clisure. We would love to have you back. Love to have your whole family back. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, we're in Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to read verses 43 through 45. Very extremely interesting verses. Jesus said, when an evil spirit comes out of a person, it goes through and it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then he says, I will return to the house I left. When it returns, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then he goes and takes with it seven other spirits, more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. This is how it will be with this wicked generation. Uh, interesting, interesting. Morning, John. Morning, Grace. Uh, Jesus talks about a person having demon possession and then having the demon cast out of them. Uh, Jesus did that many times. <coughs> in fact, that's the most common miracle that we read about in the Gospels, is Jesus casting out demons. Uh, very extremely prevalent at that time. Uh, here he describes this happening, but the demon able to return and bring others back with them. It's interesting that Jesus confirms that de some demons are more evil than others. Uh, just like angels, there's, there's higher angels than others. Demons, there's some more wicked than others. So the question is, why was the demon able to return? If it was cast out of the person, why was it able to return? Uh, most likely because that person's heart was still empty. Obviously, he, they had that person hadn't replaced the demon with the Holy Spirit, and demons do not like to be out just ro just roaming. They, they 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 want a home. They want to have a home. Let, let, listen to this. I'm going to read an interesting story here in Luke chapter eight. Uh, just listen to the story. They sailed to the region of Gerenesis, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you not to tor don't torture me. Here's, here's what the, what's interesting. The demons recognized Jesus, called him the Most High God. They knew who Jesus was because they had been with him in heaven prior to being cast out of heaven. And then it says, I beg you not to torture me. How would they, how would just, did Jesus ever torture any of the demons when they came out? No, torture would be for a demon being cast back into hell cast into hell or cast out with nowhere to with nowhere to to dwell for Jesus had commanded the evil spirit to come out of the man many times it had seized him and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places Jesus asked him what is your name legion he replied because many demons had gone into him and they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. <clears throat> they kept pleading with Jesus, don't send us, don't send us into the abyss, don't send us back into hell. Good morning, Jocelyn. Good morning, Irene. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. Then when the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. Interesting story. Interesting story. The man was possessed by multiple demons. The demons recognized Jesus. They did not want to be cast into hell, so they asked to go into the pigs. They, they just wanted somewhere to, to, to live. Now, here's what's interesting about this now. You may never, you may never 
deal with this in, in your lifetime. I, the only way you're ever going to deal with this is if you really get deep into ministry. When you, Because when you get deep into ministry, you start working with people. And when you work with people, you meet all kinds of people. <clears throat> and if you're and if you're really doing spiritual work, you're going to run into people with demons. I have done that many times in my ministry. Morning, Christina. I think it's, I don't know if it's Christina or Christine. Um, the, the, so here's one of the, the dangers. Uh, one of the dangers is when you cast out, if you ever, if you ever have asked Jesus to cast a, de cast a, a demon out of a person, if there's unsaved people nearby them, that demon could well go into one of those people. Let me share a story with you. I've shared this with some of you, but I'll share it again with you so you can understand this better. Um, when we were doing outreach, we were reaching all kinds of, of young people for the Lord. We were using secular bands to bring them in. I'd give a gospel message, and every week there'd be there'd be six to 12 people giving their life to the Lord, young people. So we decided to take them on a retreat to Big Bear. It was a winter retreat. Now, not all of them were saved. Some of them were and some of them were not saved. And so that was the whole idea of taking them on the retreat to, to present the gospel to them so that hopefully many of them would become saved on the retreat. While we were on the retreat, we get pretty serious when we're on retreats. A lot of worship, a lot of, a lot of praying, a lot of hands-on praying. And we were praying for this one young man a uh, young boy, he, I think he was like a junior in high school at that time. And, and we were praying over him. And as we were praying over him, uh, we could sense that this was, there was something serious going on. Uh, he started shaking an awful lot. And then all of a sudden, that voice came out of him, that deep, deep voice, which I knew right away was demon possession. Uh, it scared the young people, it scared them to death when that happened. When that voice came out that just scared them, many of them ran outside. They, they, were, they didn't have their coats on, some didn't have their shoes on. It was winter, there was snow, but they were so scared they ran outside. And then I immediately, the, some of the other leaders and some of the other young people wanted to keep praying for him. I, I shut it down immediately. Immediately I shut it down. And they were asking me afterwards why, why I had done that. And I told them it was because there were too many non-Christians in the, in the group. Too many that, that, that were not saved. And if we, if we had asked Jesus to cast that demon out of that young boy, God knows where that demon would have gone. Or demons. So I quoted this scripture to him at that time so that they could understand what I was talking about. And, uh, and it had quite an impact on the, on the youth group, quite an impact. That young boy later on uh, ended up um, stabbing his girlfriend's grandmother like 50 sometimes with, uh, with a knife uh, and ended up going to prison for life. He was, I think he was only 17 or 18 years old, and he's been in prison, life in prison without parole uh, because he's demon-possessed. So that was the reason that I didn't. Um, but people ask me all the time, people ask me, can a Christian be possessed by a demon? In other words, could that, could that demon come out and gone into a, a, Christ, a, a Christian person? And the answer is no, no. And here's why. Because when you give your life to the Lord, you immediately receive his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit comes within you, immediately comes within you. There's, there's no way that the Holy Spirit of God would allow a demon to reside in the same place that, he, that the Holy Spirit resides. So no, no, a Christian cannot be possessed by, by, a, by, by, a, by a demon. Listen here in 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. It says, Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Put the Holy Spirit within us, guaranteeing what is come. Now, another question that people ask all the time, Christians ask all the time, is can, can a Christian lose their salvation? And again, I, I say to them, no, no, you can't. Because when you 
gave your life to the Lord, you received his Holy Spirit. It says, received the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing eternal life. In other, in other scriptures, it's, here it says, guaranteeing what is to come. In other scriptures, it says, guaranteeing eternal life. So he puts his Holy Spirit in you, guaranteeing you that you're going to go to heaven. So how could he put his Holy Spirit in you and then take it away from you? That would be like taking his guarantee away from you. That would be like Jesus, that God being a hypocrite. Well, of course he's not a hypocrite. So, so there's no way, two things that you learned this morning. There's no way that a Christian can be possessed by a demon. There's absolutely no way that uh, the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God would not allow a demon to reside with him. And there's no way you can lose your salvation because God gave you the Holy Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing that you're going to go to heaven. So these are two questions that, are, that, that I get asked uh, the, the most is, uh, is these two. So now you know and you can give this answer to other Christians when they ask, if they ever ask you. Remember it says, be prepared to give an answer for the hope that is in you. This is why, this is why it's so important for those of you that are committed to doing these daily devotions, to doing the messages that I give. It, it, it says faith grows from hearing God's word. You, you become knowledgeable. You are able then to answer other people's questions because I'm sure that you have, you have many questions. And when you have questions, it's always nice to have someone near you that can give you answers and give you the right answers. So now you are capable of giving answers to others when they ask the same questions. So thank you for joining. Thank you for growing in your faith. Uh, God will use you mightily if you're willing. Uh, tonight is our youth message at 7 o'clock for the youth group. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock for our next day of the devotion. Uh, do me a favor. The sharings have kind of gone down. Be, be willing to share this. Share this video so that other Christians can can find out about about, about their faith. And, and even Christians that are not saved, that they too can learn what it means to be a Christian. So just hit that share button, okay? Uh, all right, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. You also, you too, all of you, you have a great day. God bless you all. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8, if not tonight. Have a great day.